Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days. Today we're going to chat about siphoning because siphoning happens. It really, really does. Siphoning happens. But we've had a real uptick in questions regarding siphoning and the safety of the food in the jars and what causes it and you know all that fun stuff. So I thought we would just put everything into one video and just talk about siphoning so that you can refer back to it when you need to or share it with a friend who's got questions. Uh, if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it if you do. And uh, leave me any comments or questions in the comment section below. I love answering your questions. So we're first going to talk about what is siphoning. Siphoning is liquid loss. And a lot of times you will see people refer to it as liquid loss also. And this happens when the liquid in the jar comes out of the jar, goes into the canning pot. Okay. And more often than not, I think it happens with pressure canning. But um, during the canning process, the reason why we put the rings on finger tight is because we don't want to crank them on because that seals the lid to the jar too tight for it to be able to vacate the excess air because the canning process that is part of it is to vacate the excess air in the jar so that there's no oxygen in there oxygen is your enemy in food preservation period any kind of food preservation oxygen is your enemy okay so part of the process is vacating the excess air and that's why your headspace is so important too so vacating the excess air <laughs> and that's why you don't want it on really tight and then sometimes just sometimes you know when it's vacating that excess air it pushes out a little bit of liquid or something too not a big deal it happens but that's why you want to pay extra close attention to your headspace and to your pressure make sure that you're keeping it at the pressure that it should be if you're supposed to be at 11 don't go for 15, you know, um, and, and if it does go up to 15, gradually bring it back down. We'll get to that. So what's interesting is that according to Penn State Extension, uh, raw packed food is more likely to lose liquid as the raw food contains air that is driven from the jar during the canning process. So if you are raw packing, um, Mainly, I think this happens with fruits and vegetables, okay? There's air inside those fruits and vegetables that we really don't account for, right? And so if you're raw packing them, a lot of people are like, well, can't, do I have to blanch them? Do I have to do this? Do, yeah, you do. Yeah, there's a, there's a purpose for it. There's a reason for it, okay? So follow the approved guidelines. But say you're putting in um, mushrooms and you don't want to blanch them, first of all. Stop messing with your shrooms. Do it the way you're supposed to. Not only by blanching the, sh the mushrooms, okay, does it cook it a little bit so that they become more pliable so that you can get more into a jar, okay, but it also takes out the excess air in the mushroom. So you don't have to worry about that. And then you have the liquid that you add to the jar on top of the mushroom, right? And then you bring it up to that headspace where it's supposed to be finger tight on the ring, process it. Should be great, okay? by those standards. So it's very important because if you don't, what you're going to end up with is potentially, let's stick with mushrooms, potentially you've got that raw mushroom in the jar, okay? And then you're going to add liquid on top of it while there's air in the mushroom. And then you're going to do your headspace, but your headspace is going to change because while you're pressure canning it, it's cooking that mushroom and vacating that air. Now, it may not vacate it during the same time frame that the pressure canner is vacating the air out of the jar, period, right? So, not only are you going to lose um, the amount of mushroom in the jar, because it's cooking, it's going to get smaller, okay? Um, you're also going to end up with this extra air in the jar. Not good. Now, another thing that causes siphoning is a rapid fluctuation of temperature. And that can happen at multiple periods during the canning process. So if you are hot packing something, you want hot food in a hot jar going into a hot canner, okay? If you are cold packing something, you want the cold food going into a room temp jar going into room temp water because that way there's not a huge disparity, dispar yeah, there's not a big difference um, between the temperatures because a big difference can also cause your jars to shatter. And some of us know how much fun that is and what a waste of food, right? Mm -hmm. So temperature fluctuation. Now, when you are pressure canning, if your temperature goes woo, 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 right? 
that's going to cause siphoning. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, so it's something to pay attention to. You want to really practice so that you find that sweet spot on your burner with your canner to keep you at the pressure that you need to be at. Sometimes that may involve getting a different heating element in order to heat your pressure canner. But you want to really try to keep it as close to the approved pressure for your area wherever you are, for your altitude, right? Now, there was a pepper video, I believe, that I did. And what happened, I had trouble keeping it going. And I, I don't even remember. It's been a few years now. But um, for some reason, I picked up the canner and moved it. Uh, bad touch. Okay. Yeah, not good. Because the shifting of this actually caused actually caused the temperature to vary somehow and it caused siphoning and oh my gosh yes so a bunch of my jars came out with only you know half of the liquid in them it it wasn't a good thing so put your can around there leave it be just leave it be let it do its thing um but you want to keep that that temperature steady now in addition to that when you are going and um you're done you finish the whole thing and you are letting it, you've let it completely depressurize on its own naturally. Don't help it. Never help it. Okay. Um, it depressurizes completely. The pop lock goes down. Don't go in there and crank off that top and take it off. Don't do it. Don't do it. First, let it sit there for five minutes. Okay. Then take your regulator off. Let it sit there for another five minutes. Then twist your top and just kind of tilt it back a little bit. Don't take it all the way off. Just tilt it back a little bit. And let it sit there for another five to ten minutes because if you take it off right away it can cause a temperature fluctuation just naturally because the inside of that canner is super hot and your house may not be that warm now I've seen people say that their houses are you know between 66 and 72 74 degrees you know and so the inside of that pressure canner is a lot hotter than that so when you take that lid off, that air automatically changes the temperature. And sometimes you will hear it because all of a sudden you hear this, you know, where it sounds like a pop bottle kind of. And that's because the temperature has fluctuated way too quick. So you want to let it come off of pressure, take your regulator off, tip your lid a little bit. Don't take it all the way off. Just tip it a little bit. Let it sit and then take the lid off and pull things out because pulling them out right away can cause all kinds of problems. Um, and so that's, you know, removing the jars too, too quickly from the canner. Most people will tell you it's five to 10 minutes, you know, that kind of thing. But I, I really do, you know, let it come all the way down, let it sit for five minutes, pull the regulator off, let it sit for five minutes, twist off the top and just nick it a little, you know, crook it a little bit and let that sit for another five to 10. It is 15 to 20 minutes to guarantee that your stuff is fine and good and you're not dealing with that. Now, one of the simplest things um, for siphoning can be caused by dirty rims. Yeah. So if you don't take that time to go around that rim and make sure that you don't have any food or particles on it, then it'll cause siphoning because it's not allowing it to firmly cement itself to the top of the jar. And another item that will prevent it from doing what it's supposed to do is debubbling. Now, there are some things where, honestly, you guys, I don't debubble jam. I just don't. It's it's liquid, right? Um, but if you're doing beans or if you're doing hot-packed meat or if you're doing most vegetables, you want to take that time. It's really important to take that time and debubble because air can hide in different little spots I'm not talking about a huge amount, you know, but air can hide in different spots around those vegetables, around those meats, around all that stuff. And then you're stuck with that in the jar. And it comes right back to that first thing I talked about where it's not coming out when it should. It shouldn't be in there. So debubble, try to get all that air out of there, you know, um, so that when the liquid, when you add the liquid to it, um, after you've debubbled, you're at that headspace that you're supposed to be at, whether it's an inch or, you know, less so that that way you have a better chance of having things not seal you know you don't you don't want it so that they don't seal so headspace debubbling let them rest and you should be all good is it a deal breaker if you siphon absolutely not in no way shape or form your food is still good if it siphons 
because siphoning happens. It really does. So if you have jars that siphon, don't freak out. Don't panic. You're going to be just fine. If they all seal, you're going to be just fine. How much is too much? When does siphoning impact safety, right? Okay, so when we're looking at liquid loss, um, it could hmm, it could shorten the shelf life of your jar a little bit, the contents of your jar a little bit. Mainly, though, it's due to discoloration um, above the liquid line. Now, you've seen me talk about canning proteins, canning meats. I do a lot of raw pack meat, and I always say when you raw pack meat, it does not create enough liquid. It's not intended to create enough liquid to go above all of the meat. If it happens, awesome. Most of the time, it doesn't. Um, and so you will see that discoloration happen with the meat. But when you crack open that jar, if it's canned properly, it'll go away. You don't even notice it. It's not there. Okay, it's just something that's happening inside the jar. And again, I hazard a guess that if you could see through the tin cans at the store, you'd probably get the same thing. So, but if you're doing things like the peppers with that pepper video, right? You don't want to save a jar if you have lost more than half of your liquid. Don't do it. Put that jar in the fridge, use it that week, okay? Um, you want at least a half of the liquid to remain. But if only half of the liquid is remaining, move those to the front and use those first. You want to get them out of there first. Because unlike the meats, the vegetables, you just can't be guaranteed it's doing what it's supposed to do. Part of the factor in the equation for the canning process is that the liquid acts as a conduit to make sure that the heat and the pressure, you know, the heat gets all the way through the entire jar and all of the contents that are in the jar. So if there's no liquid in there, like, oh, it just makes my skin crawl, like dry canning potatoes, meaning no liquid, just the potatoes in the jar. Just so wrong and so dangerous on so many levels, okay? But because they can't factor that in, um, and it's got more air in there than the equation for the canning time in any of the books, you can't be guaranteed it's safe. This is a science. It's not a really cool guessing game, okay? And personally, I'm not willing to risk my family and my friends um, on me having some shortcuts and a guessing game. It's not worth it. So uh, with the vegetables, if they have pressure canned and lost that much liquid, there's no guarantee that the heat penetrated the vegetable to the degree that it needed to for the time that it needed to, to have it be safe. Okay. Um, but for the most part, it's a cosmetic thing because that will significantly discolor. And I don't believe vegetables kick back the way meat does. You know, meat's fine. Like I said, when you're raw packing meat, that's just part of the process and it's factored in there. When you're doing vegetables, there is no such thing as raw packing vegetables. Well, there is, but not with no liquid. You know, you have to add the liquid to it. With meat, raw packing, you don't. So when you're siphoning, you know, when you're canning, if it siphons to that extent, it's safer to put it in the fridge. But if it seals, just plan on using it within the next few months. Um, it's not a long-term storage thing. Most of the time, as you know, when I'm canning, I'm looking at doing, I don't do small batches. I should, I really should, but I, I don't do small batches because what I do is I do green beans for a year. Yay. Let's be done. You know? And so for me, that just, that doesn't work. But if you're just doing, if you're just canning, if you're just doing your do, take your time, do it the right way. And you don't have to worry about the rest of it. Okay. A little bit of siphoning does not mean that it's not safe to eat. A whole bunch of siphoning means mm, put it in the fridge and use it sooner than later, you know? So I hope this answered some of your questions regarding siphoning. If you have any other siphoning questions, please throw it in the comment section down below. We are going to be coming back at you with canning chats starting in March. I know it was supposed to be February. It's been a rough month. As you can tell, I have not left my headband still. So we will start having canning chats again. But any questions regarding siphoning, throw them in the comments section down below and I will try to answer them for you. I will put the link for the uh, Penn State Extension uh, comments regarding liquid loss down below so that you guys can see it too. I'll put a link for the headband too. It has earphones in it so I can listen to my books. It's incredible. It's like a big hug all day long. Um, but 
I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope it answered your questions about siphoning. And until next time, everybody, please be safe.